Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a nice polynomial system. We have x plus y plus z equals 5 and 2xy minus z squared equals 25. And we're going to be solving for x, y, and z values. x, y, and z are real, so we're going to look for real values even though I'm going to talk about complex solutions as well. So let's go ahead and start with the real approach. To be able to solve this problem, and notice that we have two equations, but three variables. So this must be some type of special system, don't you think? And what makes it special? That's a good question. So now let's go ahead and start by squaring both sides on the first equation. Let's go ahead and square both sides. That's going to give us x squared plus y squared plus z squared, remember the formula, plus 2xy plus 2xz plus 2yz, and that's equal to 25. So far, so good. Now, notice that this is equal to the second equation because the second expression equals to 25 as well. So if two things are equal to the same thing, then they're equal. So what I can do is replace the 25 with this one, 2xy minus z squared. Nice. Let's see what happens. Is that going to help us at all? Let's find out. First of all, 2xy is going to cancel out. And then we can go ahead and put the z on the left-hand side, right? That's going to give us x squared plus y squared plus 2z squared, z squared plus z squared, plus 2xz plus 2yz equals 0. Now, at this point, you can do a couple different things. You could probably factor out a z here, maybe, or 2z. That'll give you z plus x plus y. And then you can replace it with 5. And that should give you something like this. Let's find out. This is 5. So we should be getting x squared plus y squared plus 10z equals 0. Does that help at all? Well, I'm not sure. Probably not, probably not, I'd like to say, even though it might. So here's what we can do. We can go ahead and compare this to the second equation, which is 2xy minus z squared equals 25. And then we can actually add these two. Can we? Why not? Let's go ahead and add them. We're going to get x squared plus y squared plus 2xy minus z squared plus 10z equals 25. Now let's go ahead and put this on the right hand side. So it's going to be x squared plus y squared plus 2xy equals z squared minus 10z plus 25. And yes, this is helpful. You know why? Because this is x plus y squared and this is z minus 5 squared. And guess what? You could get that. Wow. I mean x plus y plus z is 5. So if you isolated x plus y from here, subtract z from both sides and square both sides, it would give you this. So this is probably not very helpful, is it? So it's kind of, we're, we're going around in circles. So let's go ahead and get rid of this. I don't think this is going to be helpful at all. So let's see what, what else can we do, right? So let's go back here and try something else. You know, if whatever you did doesn't work, then you probably need to try something else, right? And it's not always going to be like win-win. Sometimes you're going to have to lose. That's fine. Instead, we're going to write this expression a little differently. Now, we have x squared and 2xz. I'm going to take one of these z squared. So I'll take z squared. I still have one z squared left. And then I will... Continue with y squared and then 2yz, and now I'm going to add the other z squared, and boom, we got it. How? If you look at this very carefully, you're going to re realize that it's made up of two pieces, and each of them is a perfect square. And that's just perfect, isn't it? Okay, great. That's how this problem was made. It's a special type of problem where you can solve for three variables with two equations. And by the way, this is not a diaphragm equation. We're not looking for integer solutions, even though we may get integers at the end. Who knows, right? So from here, what are we getting? 
Well, if x, y, z are real, x plus z and y plus z are real, if you add two real numbers squared, then you can only get a zero if each number is zero. In other words, you can get a zero by adding two zeros or by adding a positive and negative. But these expressions cannot be negative if x, y, z are real. So they both have to be zero. That's the only, uh, what's it called? That's the only conclusion we can get from here. So we get a system of equations from an equation, which is super duper nice, don't you think? So from here, we get the following. X equals negative Z, Y equals negative C. So Y and X are equal, and they're both equal to negative Z. How do we use that information to solve for each, each one of those? Well, X plus Y plus Z is equal to five. Since X and Z are opposites, X plus Z is zero. From here, we get Y equals five. But y and x are the same, so x is also 5, and z is the opposite, so it's negative 5. Uh-oh, we got the solution set, looks like. So 5, 5, negative 5 satisfies this system. And if you don't believe that, go ahead and plug it in, because it should work, right? So that's basically the real approach, right? What happens with the complex approach? So with the complex approach, even though this channel is not about complex numbers because I have another channel that is dedicated to complex numbers and it's called A plus BI and go ahead and check it out if you haven't done so already. Okay, so now let's go ahead and take a look. How do we approach this in a complex manner? So I'm going to take it from here. So start here because we've already done all the work, right? There's no need to reinvent the wheel. So we start with X plus Z squared plus Y plus Z squared equals zero. Now, we're going to go ahead and put the one of these on the right-hand side. So let's go ahead and subtract the y plus z quantity squared from both sides. It's going to give us the following. This is where the tricky part starts. We can go ahead and square root both sides. And obviously, we're not looking for real solutions in this case, okay? Because it's not going to work, right? So what do you get from here? When you square root negative 1, because y plus z squared is non-negative, negative 1 needs to be square rooted, which is not a real number. That's i. Did you know that? Again, we talk about all of these in A plus bi, so go ahead and check it out and let us know what you think. But i can be defined as the square root of negative 1. So this expression can be written in two ways. x plus z is y plus z multiplied by i. By the way, when you square both sides here, you should get this one, which means it's true, right? But it's not a two-way implication. There are two results, like first case and second case. The second case is the opposite because when you square negative i, you still get i squared, which is negative 1. Awesome. So we're going to look at each case separately. Let's start with the first one. So with the first case, we have x plus z equals y plus z multiplied by i. By the way, if x, y, z are real, we get that this is 0 and we get back to the first approach. Well, we don't need to do that because we're looking for non-real solutions. So how does this work? Well, if x, y, z are real numbers, I could probably just replace them with something, right? Maybe I could do x equals a plus b i, y equals c plus d i, and z equals e plus f i, right? a plus b i, by the way, is my favorite because it's the name of this channel. Did you know that? So hopefully you'll remember that. But here's the thing. We know that x plus y plus z is equal to 5. Great. How does that help? Let's find out. x plus y plus z is 5. And x plus z is this. So we can kind of write this as y plus y plus z i, I mean the quantity, equals 5. That's awesome. Because now we got rid of x. We have two variables and we can still use these. Let's use them y is c plus di, and then i times y plus z, which is c plus di plus e plus fi, the whole thing is 5. Now here, a, b, c, d, e, f are all real, because that's how complex numbers are defined. So let's go ahead and put the real parts together. When you distribute this, you should be getting something like this. i times d, i plus fi, plus i times c plus e. And then you're going to get C plus DI, and then, oops, there's a plus sign. But this will become a minus sign because I squared is negative 1, so it's going to minus D minus F plus I times 
c plus e, and the whole thing is equal to 5. Awesome. Let's go to put the real parts together, c minus d minus f, plus c plus d plus e, all multiplied by i equals 5. Now, we can compare apples and apples, not apples and oranges, because now we have a complex number on either side, but there's no imaginary part here, so the coefficient must be 0, and this needs to be 5. That gives us a system of equations. Let's go ahead and try solving that. C minus D minus F equals 5, and C plus D plus E equals 0. There's a couple of ways to go about it, but I would probably just isolate uh, C minus D and C plus E, so C plus D, I mean. So we can kind of solve for C and D, only write them in terms of E and F. For example, if you add these two equations, 2C or not 2C, do you see what I'm talking about? F minus E plus 5, and then from here, C will be F minus E plus 5 divided by 2. And if you go ahead and plug it into one of these equations, like the second one, F minus E plus 5 divided by 2 plus D equals negative E, and our goal is to solve for D here. So it's isolated, D equals negative E minus F minus E plus 5 divided by 2, That'll be multiplied, so it'll be like negative 2e minus f plus e minus 5. Don't forget to negate everything here. And then that should be d equals negative e minus f minus 5 divided by 2. So that's c, that's d. Let's go ahead and make up some values for e and f because we have the freedom, right? So suppose f is, oops, f is 5 and e is 1. That gives us c equals 5 minus 1, which is 4, 4 plus 5. Oops. You know what? I want to pick, um, I think I want to pick an even number for E so we can get a good answer. 5 minus 2 is equal to 3. 3 plus 5 is 8, so C is 4. And negative E, negative 2, minus 5 is negative 7, negative 12, uh, that's a negative 6. So those are the values, so that means Y is equal to C plus DI, which is 4 minus 6I. Z is equal to E plus FI which is 2 plus 5i, and x should be a number such that when you add these all up, the sum should be 5, so it's going to be negative 1, and this is going to be negative i, so it's going to be like plus i. If you add x, y, z, you should be getting 5. But here's the million dollar question. Does that satisfy the second equation? If it doesn't, then we're not going to take it, and you can go ahead and check it out real quick. Multiply these together and check it out and let us know. If this doesn't work, go with the second option and then let us know again do we get a complex solution from here? And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care. Don't forget to check out A plus B, I, and bye-bye.